Thank you. Uh, thanks for attending my talk. I hope you had a great lunch and you are not too tired. And you can have a nap, but just be quiet. Don't snore. Uh, I would love to have a nap, personally. So, yeah, as Antoine said, are we, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, PKG Base, which is a big project in FreeBSD to use PKG to, uh, to distribute and update the base system. So first of all, who I am, uh, so my name is Emmanuel Vado, I'm manual at freebsd.org. I'm a FreeBSD user since 2004, a source committer since 2016. Uh, in source, I mostly deal with uh, ARM and ARM64 uh, related stuff. I'm a FreeBSD port committer since uh, 2018, and there I also deal with uh, ARM and ARM64 related stuff, most, uh, uh, most of all uh, bootloaders, uh, and I'm a freelance developer. So, what is PKG based? Well, it's using PKG for packaging and uh, updating FreeBSD base. Not really surprising uh, from the name. PKG is the default package manager, manager since 12.0, since, uh, which means that uh, every supported branch is using uh, PKG. The old PKG tool uh, have been deprecated. Uh, the goal is to split base into multiple packages, uh, so that package manage. And it started a long time ago in 2015 uh, by Baptiste Daoussin, Bapt at FreeBSD. Uh, he first presented a talk at BSD Camp 2015, and he started around January or February uh, of this year. So it's been a long time. Uh, it was abandoned. Uh, for a lot of time, and I've picked up uh, last uh, March. So the goal are uh, to provide binary upgrades for all the FreeBSD release, the FreeBSD stable branch, and the FreeBSD current branch. It allows fine-grain installation, so if you want to have a system without SendMail, without NFS, without toolchain, because your appliance uh, or your use case don't need it, uh, it's better. So you can do that really easily. Uh, it allows PKG to deal with conf, uh, configuration file. Uh, PKG have a three-way merging mechanism where it's more or less you will never have any problem if you do some local modification uh, uh, on some files. Uh, so when you, are, you will update the base system and it will update uh, a new uh, def default configuration file, it will do a three way merge, and most of the time you won't have any problem. And it allows developers to provide a package for users to test. For example, uh, if somebody said to me, okay, so I think that this, this driver is broken, but I do not really know or want to compile a new kernel or so some specific part of the, o of the OS, I can just send it to him one package, and he will install it, test, and provide feedback, and then uh, roll back to the uh, official package. Uh, it also allows us to provide some, uh, for example, some kernel package that uh, enable some, uh, some new flag, for example, uh, some new way of doing locking or whatever. Uh, FreeBSD could provide a new kernel configuration, push some package, and this will be easier for users to uh, test those modifications and report problems. The goals are also that everything must live in the build system. So currently, you build your package uh, with the make packages uh, target. Uh, we don't want any external tool. Uh, so not using the port tree, not using some shell scripts that live in a, in, a, in a user branch or whatever. We want everything integrated in the build system. It needs also to be able to uh, build and uh, create packages as, as a user, no need for, uh, for root accounts, uh, and this is currently the case. It also needs to be able to creates a package for other architecture. It's really important for small embedded uh, boards, where if you want to build the base, the base system, or even the kernel, it could take ages. Uh, 
sometimes you saw people on the FreeBSD R mailing list that say, oh yeah, I've just run a make build role on my Raspberry Pi, which is running at maybe 400 megahertz on an SD card, a really slow SD card, and say, yeah, and two days later, uh, I'm an H2, do it, or it broke. And you don't want to wait two days uh, just to test an update or just to update your system. And so I, I wrote, I want people to create FreeBSD distros. What I mean by that is that I see a lot uh, on the internet people creating Linux distro, like based on Debian. Uh, for example, for uh, Armboard, you have something called uh, PyHole, which is just a Debian uh, based on a uh, Raspbian, so Debian uh, distro for Raspberry Pi. Uh, that allow you to uh, have a DNS hole and not have any ads on the internet, on YouTube, etc. Having FreeBSD package will be way easier for people to create some FreeBSD distro that is uh, done for a specific task. You could replace FreeBSD distro by Appliance too, but Appliance is like more professional way and distro is like, yeah, I just, I just did that, I put that on YouTube, and if you want to donate some money, so I continue, etc. cetera. This uh, appliance is more professional. So, how the package are generated? Uh, we first install a fake root uh, during the make target called the world stage and kernel stage. Uh, this is called uh, automatically when you are uh, doing the make package, uh, packages target. Um, and so everything will be installed in your uh, OBGDIR uh, under, uh, under a directory called world stage and kernel stage. And use, it uses two mechanisms. Uh, the first thing is that it passes dash d node root, which uh, will not call install with a dash o option, so it will never set the correct ownership or uh, set the correct right. Uh, instead, everything will be written in a file called Metalog, uh, which is just an empty file. And so you will have the world stage that are just the file, just copied. And uh, associated with that, you have a Metalog file where you find the correct um, write, the correct owner, etc. And uh, TAR, uh, or more, more precisely, uh, LibArchive, which is used by TAR and by PKG, can read a metalog, metalog file, and so when it will create the package, it will just read the correct uh, right and correct owner from this file uh, to be associated with the file. Um, it also had some tags in the metalog, so that's just entry tags, uh, which contain the name of the package, and this will be used uh, to uh, choose a destination package for uh, a specific file. Um, by default, if someone, uh, if some part of the build do not uh, specify uh, a package, everything will go to the FreeBSD-Utilities package. Uh, this is a package that I created last week or maybe two weeks ago. Um, it used to be a different, uh, different one for the default package. Uh, it's, it's done like that because it's just easier. And I will talk about later on the uh, what's the plan to split the FreeBSD utility package. If you, are, if you want more information on, on uh, how this is done, you can look at the bsd.mk uh, file in shared uh, slash mk, and you will see everything uh, about the uh, package creation. Uh, and yeah, as I say, make file can override the package uh, by just uh, putting pack package equal blah, 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 in the MAC file, and that's how you choose uh, the target package. It uses UCL, so that's uh, confi uh, Universal Configuration Language. Uh, this is a language used by PKG uh, to, uh, for, the, um, for the manifest file. Uh, it's also, use, uh, also used in base for different things. I think Jails can use UCL file. Uh, what was the tool that you converted, syslog or, C or new syslog? Uh, so yeah, UCL is a, a bit used in FreeBSD, we will like more use of it, and since package already use it, it makes sense to, uh, to use uh, UCL to define the package, and all the UCL file uh, that define the package for uh, PKG base are under the release slash packages directory. And the playlist creation, so 
in, in the package, in uh, to create a package, you have to provide uh, a description of the package, like who is the maintainer, what's the what's the name, the version, etc. And you have to provide a list uh, of files, and this is automati automatically generated uh, with the help of the uh, metalog file. And what the make packages target does, it's, it not only uh, creates the packages, it also creates the repository. So at the end, you only have to uh, rsync or, or scp uh, the, the directory and have it served either locally or uh, by uh, some uh, uh, HTTP, and uh, you can distribute package for everyone to use. So how's the best splits? Uh, splits. Uh, first of all, we cannot please everyone uh, if I think that some part of the base system should be in its own package, someone else will have some other argument, not better, not worse, but another argument. So yeah, we cannot please anyone, uh, everyone. Uh, so for now, since I'm the only one uh, that's working on PKG base, well, I have my arguments and you have to deal with it. So unless you have a really better argument, <laughs> we will go my way. <laughs> Thank you. Um, first of all, the current split is not final. Uh, in the past months, I've done a lot of commits that changes uh, a lot of stuff, and I'm still not done. I hope to, yeah, I hope to set it up, set up uh, maybe in a month or two. But yeah, we'll see. Um, so first of all, each kernel is it uh, is in its own package based on the config file. What does that mean? That you can have multiple uh, kernel package. So for a release, think about uh, distributing a generic package and a generic slash debug package. So that would allow user to just install a new package uh, to use the debug kernel, provide uh, information to the user, etc. For um, for current uh, branch, the default is to build the debug kernel and have a uh, dash no debug. So the same thing, if you want to run current, but don't, but don't have all the overhead of running a debug kernel, well, you can, uh, you can choose. And if you define your own, uh, your own kernel config, it will also be uh, created and uh, it will be in a package. We have, of course, FreeBSD bootloader, which contains everything bootloader rel re uh, related. So that's all the file in slash boot except the kernel. So the all the configuration file, either Lua or Force, etc. Uh, we have the Celib package that contains the say runtime, so that's the runtime linker, libc, libthread, etc. Um, the reason is that uh, that they are in, in their own package is that. So I'm not sure that I've understood everything correctly. There is a mail from uh, Kib Konstantin Belusov uh, from uh, April 29 on the PKG based uh, mailing list, so you can have a look just to be sure that I've understood correctly. So um, all the external uh, ABI are backward compatible and will all, uh, always work uh, between uh, if, for example, uh, a null binary is, is uh, linked with a null uh, libc, but you update your libc, it will work with a new libc. But all the internal uh, between libc, libthread, etc., are not stable and, are, and will never be stable. So you have to update them uh, more or less at the same time. And if you put them in a really, really big package uh, with a lot of other stuff, there is a lot of chance that libc will be updated first because uh, alphabetically it's, uh, it's one of the first files, and libthread will be updated uh, very, uh, very, long, uh, very long time after, so we, you will most likely have a big breakage, and we'll have to uh, boot from external media to uh, recover your FreeBSD installation. Uh, we have the FreeBSD runtime package. This used to be the default to go package. It was very big. It was, even at the time, it, it was not correctly named. So, and now it's even less, uh, less correctly named. So I need to change the name. I still don't know how I will call it. But uh, the goal is to have everything to be able to boot into single user and repair an installation. So this means is that if you install the FreeBSD kernel package, the bootloader, CLibs, and runtime, you can boot onto a single user and have everything to repair uh, UFS or ZFS uh, disk. You have 
enough um, uh, network tools to be able to uh, configure the network and maybe grab some file, etc. So that's one of the goals. So maybe I will really need to uh, FreeBSD core utils, but then core utils is used in Linux. But yeah, I mean the name the, the name makes sense to call it core utils, but I don't really. So yeah, it will change. I still don't know uh, what name I will choose. If you have any ID, please. Hmm? What? Who? Prepare? Oh, repair. Yeah, well, it, it's not only for, for repair. I mean, this is also tools that you need to have a full FreeBSD. Uh, naming is hard. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> uh, you have the FreeBSD-RC package, which contains the RC subsystem. I've split those uh, not, not so long ago. Uh, for two reasons, there is some people working on uh, OpenRC for FreeBSD, uh, the IX system guy. I don't know if we, if we will ever see some ports or whatever to be able to use that in FreeBSD vanilla, but at least know the RC files are in their own package, and if you want to uh, just experiment with another uh, RC system, it will be easier. And also, um, if you just take the FreeBSD runtime and FreeBSD uh, CLIPS, uh, package, it's very uh, handy to create a small MFS suite that have everything to uh, bootstrap to everything else. Um, and most, most of the time when you do a small embedded MFS suite, so that's a memory file system that is loaded by the kernel or integrated into the kernel, you will have a, a specific slash etc RC file that just do what you want to do. So that's the reason it was uh, splitted. And yeah, as I say, FreeBSD utilities, it's not the default package, and it contains a lot of different things. Uh, yeah, it, it's uh, the to-go package, so there, there is still some stuff that I need to take out. Um, every package is also split with dash debug, dash development, dash profile package. Uh, that means that all the debug files will end up into a dash debug, development files, so headers, etc., in their own package, and same thing for the profile file. Um, that's really useful for uh, FreeBSD users because most of the time you don't need debug file, you don't need development file, you will just install your FreeBSD on your server, install some package, and run it. And if you have any problems, you can still install the dash debug file corresponding to the subsystems that you want to debug, do your debugging, and remove the package. Same thing for development and profile. And this is done automatically based on the, on the type of the file. On 64-bit arch that have 32 bit uh, support, so that's only MD64 for now, uh, we also create some dash lib32 package. Um, I don't know if anyone still using uh, still use uh, lib32 uh, on MD64. I personally have no use for it. I'm pretty sure that there is a lot of use. I think that Wine uh, on MD64 uh, at least used to use those, but I'm not sure anymore. Um, every everything coming from Contrib, so some stuff that we pull from uh, another uh, repository are in their own package. The reason is that for security advisories or error notice, uh, you are usually not, you could be not warned in advance, and since you need to roll out a package very, very quick, uh, it's easier to have this in their own package, so you will only have uh, some part of the tree to, um, to row distribute. FreeBSD test contain all the test suites. Again, most of the time, people don't care about tests. Users don't care about tests. Only developers should care about tests. And I'm not sure that a lot of developers do care about. I personally don't really. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm, bad. I'm bad for that. I know I'm bad. You can boo me. <laughs> uh, at least I'm honest. I know that other people will not say the same. So anyway, everything uh, in the FreeBSD test contain all the test suites. Maybe we should pull the QA, some QA binary. We have some QA binary uh, in tree. Uh, maybe we should just put everything in the, in the test package. I don't know. And the other package are application or lib specific. For example, I've created not so, uh, so long ago FreeBSD that's Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth package. You don't need Bluetooth in a, in a server, I hope. 
Uh, you don't need Bluetooth in a jail. Uh, same thing for WPA, host APD, etc. So I've created those packages. So if you don't want them, don't need them, well, it's there for you if you want to install them. But I don't think that most of the people will use them. And yeah, I will continue to move things out of the utilities package. Uh, maybe I should move NFS out of it. Uh, again, you don't need NFS in a jail unless you have some really weird jail setup. Uh, same thing for Kerberos. Uh, I used to love Kerberos and use it a lot when I was at university. I don't think it's very, very used outside of the FreeBSD cluster right now. So maybe it makes sense to just put everything in a, uh, in a Kerberos package. That will also possibly help if people want to install uh, either MDAL or MIT Kerberos from ports. You will not have conflict uh, with the uh, base uh, Kerberos utilities. I don't know. Um, so at the beginning of PKG base, there was a lot of uh, complain about the number uh, of packages that we have. It used to be around 800. Uh, that was, if you count, uh, debug, development, profile, and libsol 2 package. Apparently, it matters to some people. Uh, for me, it only matters because if you have a really huge amount of package, uh, the first time you install is, is very long. It's way longer than uh, what we, uh, we are currently doing, which is just extracting uh, bas.txz and kernel.txz. Uh, instead of dealing with two uh, tar files, you are dealing with 800, so of course it's longer. I personally don't really care, apart from this result, I don't care to have a huge number of packages uh, as long as uh, the splitting is done in a logical way. At least, well, yeah, that one that could be explained. Uh, right now, we have uh, true, uh, 392 package. Um, if you don't count the debug development profile, it's only 118. And if you don't install the lib32, it's only 80 package. Which I think is good. It's not that long to install. Um, as I said, I will continue to split out some stuff uh, out of uh, the utility package, but I think we can uh, we can have a target of around 100 package, and it will still be okay um, uh, performance-wise. So yeah, that's what I'm uh, I'm planning to do. Um, so in FreeBSD system, we have the, we have a with and without uh, in assassin.conf as that control what will be built, and also uh, if we build with some library supports. Um, with PKG base, you have. Uh, you have two way. Uh, well, there, there is two uh, two things that will happen if you start to tweak. If, for example, you don't build with uh, you build with uh, without APM or without MD, those packages will simply not be created. Uh, if you don't uh, build, for example, without Capticom, it will change the content of the package. Um, for now, there is no real solution. Uh, ports have a mechanism called uh, flavors, uh, so we can maybe. Uh, add something like that, that we had, uh, for example, freebsd-utilities-no-capsicum. I don't really have plan for now to work on that, but yeah, we need something. Um, another uh, complaint about, uh, uh, from user was, yeah, each time I'm rebuilding my system, I make the package, I need to reinstall and upgrade every package, even if the content haven't changed. And this is true if you just uh, do what I just said, so make packages and distribute the package. Think that there is a way to provide some good package, it's just that it was never uh, documented. Um, I think that my slide has the only documentation, so I will try to put that on the FreeBSD wiki, uh, which could be useful for uh, people. So the first thing is to define uh, with repository build. Uh, Reproducible build will uh, will strip some uh, all the dates in compiled uh, binaries, etc. So that means if you use the same compiler to compile the same source at any point of time, you will have the same binaries, uh, the same binary produced. This is the default on uh, 
release and current, and it's not the default on, uh, uh, sorry, uh, release and stable, and it's not the default in FreeBSD current. You need to define source date epoch. That's the variable I, yeah, I think I spent a uh, whole afternoon uh, searching for this variable. And when I say Baptiste, oh, I need to do that, say, so, yeah, I didn't I tell you about it? I said, no, you didn't. So yeah. Um, this, is to, this is used to uh, tweak uh, libarchive uh, output. It will just set the timestamp to, uh, to uh, every file to the timestamp that you uh, set in, the, in this variable. You need to pass repository to make, uh, to have the repository uh, at uh, some, uh, some pass in your, uh, in your system. You make packages, and then you can distribute. So this is how you bootstrap uh, your package, for example, for uh, 13.0. Then when we will have 13.0-p1, uh, p2, p3, uh, meaning we have some uh, security uh, advisories or errata, what we will do is, again, define reproducible uh, build. We use the same source data epoch as the one we use to bootstrap. You need to set PKG version to make, because by default, uh, if you make the package, uh, it will be called 13.0-p1, uh, and it will be called that also inside the, um, inside the tar, inside the, the, the manifest of the package. So you need to use the same value as a bootstrap run. You use temporary repo there. You compare the package with a, with a bootstrap run. You can just use MD5, SHA, or whatever. You regenerate the package with the correct SUSDART epoch and the new package version. And all the packages that have changed, you, erred, uh, you delete them from the ori original repo, you copy the new one, you regenerate the repository, and then you will, if for, for example, only the kernel have uh, error notice, you will end up with just one new package, which is uh, freebsd-kernel-generic-13.0-p1. There is nothing currently in the source tree that does that automatically. This is something that I'm working on, and I hope to have everything ready soon. Um, there is still one problem with package that if you, uh, if, you if for example, I, uh, I create a new package, um, and people just package upgrade to upgrade the system, the new package will, will not be uh, installed unless it's a new dependency of an existing package. So there is a plan to use a PKG group. This is a feature that I am currently developing. Uh, Baptiste designed PKG groups a long time ago, but only on the paper. And when I mean paper, I mean in his, in his head. Um, so this is basically meta package, like we have on the port tree, but at the repo, uh, repository level. So when you create your PKG repository, you give it a, a directory with a lot of PKG groups, and it will create fake packages that only uh, uh, have dependencies. So then the FreeBSD installer could just have uh, FreeBSD-bas group, dash debug, dash lib32, and we just select which groups that you want to install. And yeah, since you are updating a group now, a uh, new package will be installed automatically on update. Uh, for example, a few days ago, uh, Maybe it was yesterday, Matthew Simon sent a mail to a PKG base and said, yeah, I've updated my PKG base system, and I was missing a lot of files, a lot of package, and yeah, this is a problem, and we need to solve it with PKG groups. Um, one thing that I plan to do, maybe not for the first, um, for the first run of PKG group, will be multiple candidates for one package. So if the FreeBSD uh, release engineering team wants to create a dash no manual or dash no capsicum package, um, in the group, you will have as a candidate for FreeBSD dash utilities, multiple candidates. So that will be the first one that is uh, without any uh, src.conf uh, tweaking. And you could have another one, which is with src.conf tweak. Um, I think it would be good, but it will be probably on the, on the PKG group version two. So current work, I have BSD install support. That means that the installer is able to install a PKG-based uh, installation. 
Uh, it's a bit crappy, uh, and I don't plan to uncrap it because I want first to use PKG group. So yeah, I just made the patch uh, so um, so I could test that everything was working. Uh, same thing, I have a release image support, but there is no point of committing that if the installer don't have support and installer needs the PKG group. But at least it's done, and I know that it is working. I've made a script called kernel select. Uh, which will allow to, so every, on, a, on a PKG based system, when you install the kernel, um, it will install in, the, in slash boot slash kernel dot kernconf. And kernel select is just a tool that will auto register the kernel that you install uh, uh, by registering a link uh, at slash boot slash kernel, so the bootloader could find it. And it will also remove itself and fall back to a default one if you remove a package. So for example, if you, uh, you, are, you have installed your FreeBSD 13.0 uh, with PKG base, um, and you want to test the FreeBSD debug kernel, if you PK, PKG install FreeBSD-kernel-generic uh, debug, it will uh, auto-select it for the next boot. And if you remove it, it will uh, remove the link and use the previous one. Or if the previous one is not installed anymore, it will just uh, use uh, FreeBSD, uh, the FreeBSD-generic kernel. And I need to do more package splits uh, again, yeah. So if you work, I really need to talk to release engineering so we can have official package, even if we say to everyone, don't use it or use it only for tests. Uh, not having right now a package uh, in an official repo means that people cannot really experience correctly uh, the PKG-based project. And yeah, I think it's bad. Uh, I still need to do a FreeBS FreeBSD update, a utility. Uh, right now, FreeBSD update is just PKG update, PKG upgrade, and everything is done correctly. Uh, but yeah, I need to do that in a, in a script shell uh, that will take exactly the same argument as FreeBSD updates. So if people have a Chrome job or, I don't know, Ansible or Salt job that does FreeBSD updates, it will just work for them. I might want to do Poudrier image support. So Poudrier image, Poudrier is a tool to build package and can also build an entire image of the FreeBSD system with the package that you built. And yeah, we need to add some uh, Poudrier image support, but if someone else wants to beat me to that, I will be perfectly happy. Um, so are we there yet? Not yet, but much closer than it used to be, and at least we have someone working on it. Um, if you want to help, there's still a few bugs in the MK file. I'm honestly very surprised and very scared when people tell me that they are using FreeBSD base, uh, PKG base, uh, for a long time, because I honestly don't know how some stuff could have worked. Um, right now, I'm only aware of one bug in the MK file, and it's not really a bad bug, it's just that some uh, profile uh, and debug, um, and debug uh, file end up in the wrong package. So you will still have them, it's, not the wrong, it's not, just not the right package. Um, and if you want to test, uh, just create a free, uh, minimal FreeBSD based package and install, for example, uh, FreeBSD dash um, uh, iSCSID and try to use iSCSID. Just to see if uh, the split was done correctly, uh, if the package contained everything, and if the, all the dependencies are uh, brought in automatically. I will not have time to test every package independently, so yeah, we need some, uh, some help on that. And there is a mailing list, pkgbase at freebusy.org. Uh, just an email, I try to read. I usually don't respond uh, often, uh, but yeah, I will try to do that more. I want to thank Baptiste and, uh, and Glenn Barber, uh, who, well, first of all, uh, reviewed all my, uh, all my work on pkgbase and uh, reviewed my slide also. So big thanks to them. And if you have any question, I will be happy to answer. Yeah, thank you for the talk. Uh, I was interested in uh, when you split packages like NFS, which have kernel support, 
uh, does the kernel parts go into the kernel or the package with the feature? No, the, the kernel part will not be split as long as uh, the generic uh, image uh, defined NFS support in the kernel, it will stay, uh, stay like that. But uh, all the user land utilities uh, will be in their own package. Okay, thank you. And same thing for every other uh, subsystem. What about things that are kernel modules? So, um, when I started, I say, okay, I don't want, I just want to have one package for kernel, but uh, the more I do work and the more I think that we should have some kernel uh, splitted. Uh, like, there is a lot of models that I don't care about. Mm -hmm. And if I find an elegant and easy way to generate some kernel package that only contains the kernel and splits the module into different sub package, Maybe that would be something that uh, I, I would like, but it, it should be done. The easy one to start there might be just all the firmware stuff that's in the Yeah, firmware. firmware file, for example, it, it should, should be, a should be in, a, in a separate package, yeah. And after, there will, I, I'm sh I, I should just commit uh, quickly uh, while nobody is really working at PKG base because I'm sure that if I do something like that, it will bike shed for months and months and years and years. Right. Um, so my question was more about, uh, you talked about Poudre image support. Yeah. Does it make sense to build it into Poudreware image if it's just for building the packages, or do we need like a Poudreware base, it's kind of like bulk, but for building just the base repo? So, um, Poudreware image support, I think the best way would be that you will not compile your gel, mm -hmm. and it will just install the official uh, uh, PKG, mm -hmm. so you don't have to compile anything. Right, but what if I want to compile just the repo for a base system that's packaged. Well, you could you could use uh, you could use PK, PKG base. So the advantage that is, uh, you you will bootstrap your uh, your stuff, uh, right. give the USB key to someone, and they could uh, automatically uh, update it. Uh, but I I don't know. Yeah. But uh, please open some uh, yes. so, some merge requests on Poudrière, and uh, we'll talk about that. If I may, another question. Uh, so one of the things which I really liked about FreeBSD, and I actually use it daily, is that uh, if you download the tarballs from the uh, distribution, uh, from the download, and you just untar them all, you have the FreeBSD in that directory, like mm -hmm. the fully functional thing. Yeah. So uh, with the PKG base, uh, will that still be possible without any, like, and I do that sometimes on other operating systems, like on Linux, for example, right? Yeah. So will I have to have a binary of PKG to install stuff in a directory, or I still will be able to just use star to create a folder full of FreeBSD? I don't think that the, we have some plan to remove the bas.txz and kernel.txz uh, uh, tar creation. It will not make sense. Okay, but it's but after like considering we are fully PKG based and yeah. forgot about like ever having mm -hmm. non PKG base, mm -hmm. will it still be like how I I don't see how it how it how it plays well together like having base DXZ with the package base at the same time. Well, some people would probably want to still use them because they have a lot of uh, of uh, a CI job using it, etc. I also plan to make a script that will convert your ex existing system into a PKG base, so we just fake the record if you have the correct file. And so you could use, for example, uh, uh, you could just uh, extract uh, bas.xz, run the script, and you will have PKG based system, but uh, without ever running a PKG install. Um, so yeah, but which you, you are talking something way in the future. <laughs> um, we still have a lot of stuff to do before. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be cool if we have that feature. Thank you. Also, uh, the, the package files are just tar files. So if you ignore the, 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 manifest, the, plus, manifest, and the, the yeah. plus manifest yeah. and three other files, you can just extract all the yeah. packages into a secret. And you will, and we, you will have will exactly the same, the same thing. Yeah. So my question was going to be about how do we convert an existing system. But your answer is you're going yeah. to build the script and that's going to... Yeah, so the, the, the idea of the script came up uh, when I was talking to, to Baptiste and said, yeah, but if people complain about the install time because we have, it was, this, this was uh, when we had a, a 800 yeah. package, said, yeah, we can just do exactly the same thing and do a script that will uh, just install the, just create a, a, a fake PKG-based system, but 
that can be uh, upgraded after. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for all your work on this. Uh, I think it's great that someone's picked it up and is charging it forward. Yep, um, <laughs> so, so my next question is not meant to, to disenfranchise at all, but I just wanted to, to understand what your thoughts were about uh, the TrueOS uh, idea of having the package base out, out of source. Uh, and when I sort of saw that, I thought, that's an interesting idea. I mean, a lot of work had already been put in at that point. Mm -hmm. Uh, to getting package base in in the source tree, yeah. um, but if I look at every other program you build, you don't you don't put the instructions on how to make a package in in the source tree for that program. You do that separately, like in the ports tree. Mm -hmm. So it kind of aligned well from that point of view in my mind. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on on that? And and I guess now it's been dropped. So yeah, uh, yeah. Apparently, so yeah. Apparently, so yeah. IX system started a. Uh, a side project, a side PKG based project that use the port tree to build um, to build the, the their package system. Split was not done the same way, and I'm not going to talk about that, but yeah, they have maybe 12, 20 packages. I think it's it's uh, not enough. Uh, my main problem is uh, you cannot use the port system efficiently to cross build. So that meaning that uh, we, I cannot use right now the, the, the IX system method to uh, cross build for MV7 or M64. That's a big showstopper for me. I have a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, of other minor concerns, but that's one of the primary ones. Uh, and I had one other question. Um, I, I guess concerned with the large number of packages, which I, I don't, I'm agree with you, I don't care too much either, except when I download them, each time a new, it starts to download the next package, there's a slight pause before the download then continues. And I started wondering how does FreeBSD Update or PortSnap uh, do that so quickly? And then I found that they have this thing called pipelined HTTP uh, or PHTTP get, as it's called, and you can look up the man page for mm -hmm. it. Do you know if there's any work uh, to, to try and get package to use pipeline to HTTP guess? There is no work, but I've uh, bugged uh, about adding uh, uh, multiple download, uh, multiple concur uh, concurrency download into package. And he's, he's thinking of doing it. And each time I see him, I try to convince even a little more that he should really work on that. Uh, same thing for the installation. There is a lot of package that you could install um, uh, in parallel uh, because they do not conflict. Uh, and sometimes it makes sense to extract a lot of tar in the same place. Like if you have an NVMe drive, you can extract maybe four, five, ten, uh, ten TGZ at the same time and it will be okay. So it's planned, I would say. But nothing uh, is really happening. For, for the download side, uh, the gentleman that implemented that, I think, was Colin Percival, who's next door doing another yeah. talk right now. Yeah. So, so maybe getting Bapt and Colin to talk might be a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Maybe PHP yeah. get being implemented Yeah, exactly. So what, what about versioning schemes and patch releases? Mm -hmm. uh, if, if, if you follow, what about upgrading and ver uh, versioning scheme and patch releases? Uh, so upgrading uh, patch release will be, uh, all the packages will be served on the same repository because it's still, for example, 13.0. Uh, and if you want at one point upgrade to 13.1, uh, when 13.1 is out, uh, this is something that the, the fake FreeBSD updates uh, uh, script shell that I, uh, that I will make will, uh, will handle. So it will just replace your uh, pkg.conf, uh, pkgbase.conf, uh, it, will, it will replace the uh, repository and just update your kernel first, you, uh, fetch all the packages, reboot uh, on the new kernel with the old base, install the new base, and there you're good to go. Okay, I was thinking more of the, 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 the patch releases when it goes to P1, P2, when, when there's a security update. And yeah. Maybe just one package is, is actually influenced by that. And you, and what about what happens then? Is, it, is, there, is there anything just, you're about? you about? Just download the new package. Just that one budget. Yeah. So if yeah. there's a bug in, or an errata thing in, in uh, ZFS uh, we, tools, yeah. for example, you will just get the new TPS, uh, ZFS yeah. tools, and that will have P1, and the rest won't. Yeah, exactly. So how does it uh, comply to FreeBSD version? Will that be upgraded still then? Just the Sorry, free what? This, uh, free, the FreeBSD version command that says, okay, you have 12.1 P1. 
Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if it's currently working uh, with FreeBSD dash yeah. version, but I will make sure of it yeah. if it's not. And it's I different. don't see why it will not work. No, no. But I have, to, I have to look. Yeah. I have to look. So because really, free but yeah, free the goal is, is to still have the FreeBSD dash version command. Yeah, yeah, but that, that, that every package would actually then influence that one uh, a binary. Right. Yeah, so maybe we will need to uh, put everything uh, related to FreeBSD dash version in, in its own package, and yeah. this package will be, will be bumped at uh, each uh, dash p something. I don't know. So, yeah, that, uh, that's, actually, that's, that's actually a good question that I I'm just curious don't really how you that thought about it. Because you have like 200 packages, you will mm. actually have 200 versions. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, in, like in a Linux distro. Yeah, I will look at that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Emmanuel. It's time. Thank you.